We're going to finish up the handout. We're going to do the practice exam. Those probably won't take too long. And that's going to be it. And then I'm going to send out uh, the exam for chapters one and two. And all this will be due next week on the 8th. So let me, let me write that out. How about? Okay. Doggy. All right. <clears throat> Oh, you know what? I need the doggy for a second. <laughs> the doggy actually does have a purpose. So I can focus this. Okay. Thank you, doggy. All right. Uh, so Uh, so this is what we're going to do tonight, and then after that, uh, later on tonight, probably maybe 9 p.m. ish, I'll send out. I shouldn't say send. I'll, I'll say send, send an email uh, with the uh, chapter one and two exam, and all of these are going to be due on a week from today, which let me check again just to make sure, is February 8th. OK, so you have, you have a week to turn it in. So you have a week to turn in these two and then also the uh, exam. And at the end of the class, I'll show you kind of how we we're going to drop those in. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh... Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I think we stopped on page two of the handout. So this is the handout, the same one we used from last week. So, yeah. And we did pick problem one and problem two, I think. And so I think we're now on problem three and four. And we're, we're not going to do any book problems from this first one. We will next class, but uh, for this first one, we're going to. Everything we need will be in the handouts. OK. And by the way, uh, for those of you that um, We're not here to last class. You can actually write right into the uh, let me pull it up on the screen here. This this handout you can actually fill it in. It's you can actually do a fill in the blank thing with it. So for again for for instance, for instance. The uh, direct materials, the beginning direct materials are 50, so you can put those in. The beginning work in process is 46, so you can put that in. And then the finished goods is 102, so you can put that in. So anyway, so as I go through here on that, I'm going to do it on the um, uh, on the written one here on the side. But you can actually type right into the document. If you want, and you can also, if you want, you can also insert little uh, 
arrows if you want. So you can say, okay, whatever comes from here, you know, goes into there. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should do it on here. Well, I'm, I'm going to do it by hand. Then I'll come back and fill this thing in. Okay, so back to my old way, which is actually kind of dark. Lighten this up a little bit. Okay. So here we have a problem that we have uh, this, where we don't know one of the numbers. So the question is, well, what do you do? And there's a couple different ways you could do it. You work forward or work backwards. I'm going to show you how to work forward. Um, because most people, it's easier for most people. And uh, uh, by the way, is my mic on high enough? I don't know if you can hear me or not. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Good. Uh, good. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah last, uh, for some reason, the last class I was in, they, it was, wasn't on very high for some reason, but okay. All right, so let's, uh, so what I'm going to do is, Go ahead and put in the account that we already know. So we know we don't know that one, but we're gonna put in the accounts that we already know. So we know, for instance, the beginning was fifty. Uh, beginning work in process was forty six. And the finished goods was one hundred two. So we know those. Okay, going over here, indirect costs, these are the overhead costs. Anytime you see indirect, it means overhead. And sometimes they'll just call them the indirect costs, but these are overhead. Uh, for us in this book, indirect and overhead are the same thing. And they didn't come from me, they came from the author of the book. <laughs> so that, um, so indirect costs, you know, if they're direct, you know, they'll be in here. Uh, they'll say direct, but uh, if they're not direct, then they'll, they'll be overhead. Oh, so I didn't put it in yet. Uh, so overhead would be 41. This up. Overhead all the way down. What I should do when I make I should make this over again and put this down here. That would be better for video classes. Okay. Uh, sales don't go in here. Direct labor we don't know. Cost of goods sold. Uh, we're gonna need that later. And then here are purchases and the purchases are just like from before they're um, direct materials okay so let's go ahead and start doing the ones that we already know so Okay. Okay, so uh, we have 50 to begin with in here. Added 130, the purchases. So the total in direct materials are 180. And if we didn't make anything, uh, we still have 180 in there. 
about, and someone says, okay, the ending is 60. So it's sort of like this. Um, if you had 180 and there's only 60 left, the question is how much did you use? All right, okay, well, you had 180, 60 is left, so you must use the difference between those two. So I'll put a little subtraction there. If you're an accounting major, uh, don't do that. That's me being bad. But you're going to subtract it out to get how much is going over to the other one. So 180 minus 60 is what, 120? It was 120, right? Okay, so 120 is going to come over here. Now, direct labor, there's a problem here. We don't know what the direct labor is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in a zero for direct labor. Now I know this number is wrong. I know that there's gonna be some direct labor and that the zero is wrong, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna work out the cost of goods sold without the direct labor, then we compare it to the cost of goods sold with the direct labor. You know, th this cost of goods sold has a direct labor in it. So I'm gonna do the direct labor, I'm gonna do the cost of goods sold without the direct labor, and that will let me know what was in the direct labor. Okay, so zero. And again, I know that this number is wrong, but it'll tell me in the end, I can figure it out, use it to figure out what it should have been. Because this cost of goods sold will be different than this one by whatever the direct labor is. Okay, so let's see here, uh, 41 just comes over. That equals 207. And then go get the um, Did you just highlight something on top of the page? I can't see. <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Sorry. you. Sorry. I'm, I'm highlighting the ending. I'm, I'm going to highlight the ending ones. So I'll, I'll do these all at once so that we all know where I'm getting these from. I'm just highlighting the ending ones. <laughs> I'm still not coordinating these uh, very well. Okay, so this is the first ending. So then we'll go to here, it'll be the uh, 45. Seven minus forty-five. So, in other words, there's forty-five we're still working on. So, the rest of these must have been finished. Yeah, and these ending ones will always get subtracted. I should be putting those in there, but uh, the idea is the same. That, that you're gonna use that to figure out what goes into the next uh
Oh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So the numbers that we're working with, they're not monetary value, right? They're just like units or mm -hmm. like. That's an excellent question. Actually, there are they are monetary values. They actually are dollars. Oh. Okay. But 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 letting you know that uh, the, there are things called equivalent units that they use, which are basically with, you know the the units that are used in a process um, with equivalent amounts. But uh, these are actually going to be in dollars, yeah. Okay, so like in real life, like these numbers could be even larger. This is just for like practice purposes. It, exactly, these would be in the millions and billions. I, yeah, I see. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And actually, there's problems in the book, um, oh. you know, that are maybe a little more realistic you know, like in the millions. Uh, my reason for doing it this way is just because it's easier. To, and, and you get the, yeah. you get the idea. Okay. But yeah, and, and you know, these could be 50 million and 60 million and so forth. Yeah. I see. Okay, thank you. That's a good question, though. Because yeah, it, it does seem like the, the the units that are traveling. And and there is, uh, and we do use and and process costs, and we use what they call equivalent units, where you know it'll be the equivalent units of work that, that are left in the system, so that uh, you do do that sometimes. So you could say like forty five dollar worth of units are still being worked on. Uh, yeah, in, in here is how much how much money is wrapped up in the work and process. So this could have some direct materials, it could have some direct labor, and it could have some overhead in it. All those, oh. have, and those would be the total cost. But there could be equivalent units. Like if these were finished, maybe they would be uh, sixty dollars or whatever it is. And so they'd have actually what they call an equivalent unit worth. Um, it, it, it's sort of like, uh, oh, here, oh, sorry. so for instance, if you had uh, 200 units and they were 25% complete, they would say, okay, the uh, what they call 50 equivalent units. And there'll be costs with those that would be as if they were completed, even though they weren't. And yeah, the, the, but so there are conversions like into, into what percentage of them that they are complete. Okay, so let's see here. So it's 162 plus. And we can go to our, and, oh, I should check that off. Yeah, that one. So our ending of 106. Okay, now here's the thing. I know that this number is wrong. Why? Because this is the cost of goods sold, but it's the cost of goods sold without direct labor. Right? There's no direct labor in here. We put the zero in. So this is the cost of goods sold without direct labor. And what we can do is then compare this to, and then use my orange, the cost of goods sold. This is the cost of goods sold with direct labor. It has everything in it. This is the cost of goods sold without direct labor. So you can compare these two, and that'll tell us what the direct labor should be. So I'll come down here, I'm going to say, OK. We know that our cost of goods sold without 
was uh, 250. Our cost of goods sold without I ain't gonna hear uh, direct labor was 158. And write that very straight. Okay, uh, so subtract those, and that'll tell us what our direct labor is. All right, so 250 minus. So this must be our direct labor. You know, this one is off by exactly what the direct labor is. You know, whatever the direct labor should have been is off by. So if we subtract those two, we'll find the direct labor. So the direct labor should be 92. Now, if you really wanted to do that, you could plug this back in. I used a, I used a pen, some of you. <laughs> if you used a pencil, you could erase, you know, and, and plug it, this 92 back in and work it out, and you should come out with 250. And so if you wanted to, you could actually plug the 92. So if you plug the 92 back in, is that like how you're supposed to check your work? You could check it. You don't need to. I mean, okay. if, if you're confident with this number. I mean, so yeah, so this would be your direct labor would be 92. Uh, you can't see what I just did. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to do this again. Okay. So our direct labor is 90. No, you, you don't have to plug it back in. Uh, I, I, you could. There's nothing wrong with doing it that way, but, uh, you know, checking your answer, but you don't need to. And if you can't with some number that you're not sure of, you can always check it that way. But the, the difference you can here, whatever number you have uh, that you're missing, uh, you can compare it to the cost of the soul. So that'd be 92. Our gross profit is the same thing as our gross margin. And that's just your sales, uh, 300 minus your cost of goods sold. And for this, we want the real cost of goods sold, the 250. It includes the So that would be your gross profit or gross margin. Well, now this thing's too bright. Okay. Okay, so again, you know, you plug in the zero and work it through as if as if that, that was a number. And whatever you can you come up with over here, you know it's gonna be wrong, but it's gonna be wrong by what exactly that should be. So that's kind of what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, what what is it without that number? And then comparing it to what it is with that. Question oh, I have a question. So mm -hmm. right now, like what we're doing, how is it different from just using the cost of goods like formula, like beginning inventory plus purchases in the beginning mm -hmm. inventory, but like, yeah. Okay, for the, for the direct materials, it's exactly the same. 
So for the direct materials, it would be exactly the same. The only difference is you're adding in the direct labor and the overhead. And, but all the rest of it is, it's exactly the same. This is an inventory account, just like you said, you know, beginning inventory plus purchases. This is beginning inventory plus everything you add into the account. You know, so these are, these three are, are, are simply inventory accounts. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. So this is an inventory account, this is an inventory account, and that's an inventory account. But yeah, they're, it's exactly the same, except that we're actually gonna take these materials and convert them into something else. So here's the materials, here's where we're converting them, and then here's what we own in the end. So this could be wood, we cut it up and all this stuff, we make it into desks. So, you know, you're just taking it and converting it. It could also be like a restaurant. You know, you take all the food, uh, you process it, you in the kitchen, you cook it and put it together and all that kind of stuff, and then you sell it. You know, a, a restaurant's a manufacturing business. Well, so what we're doing, we're just kind of organizing the, what the information we have, like doing key accounts. These, yeah, and, and again, like, well, and then the key accounts are, you know, the, the reason I have it set up this way, it's like we talked about last time we have the end. Everything comes in on this side and goes out on the other. And out. So, so this is kind of like the flow. You know, you're coming in like this, you can do it this way. But I'll show you something else about this. And one of the reasons why I, I teach it this way at all levels is that if you got, uh, you, let's say you're going into accounting and you go to the you know, CPA exam, or whatever, you actually know the journal entries. If you know this method, you can do all the journal entries for this. The journal entries look like this. I know you guys don't, <laughs> but if you're a county major, you know, the, 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 wherever there's an arrow is a journal entry. So this would be direct materials. It's on the debit side. And this is work in process. It's on the credit side. And so for each of these, you just go through and wherever there's a, an arrow, it's a journal entry. Yeah, and you know the, the book shows different ways of doing this, but this this is what I like showing it this way because it shows kind of like the flow you can imagine. Well, it's like on a factory floor. This is where all the stuff comes in. You're on the factory floor, they make it, and then over here they sell. Professor, I have another question. In the in the previous problems that we've had, the cost of goods manufacture and sold was the difference between the finished goods beginning and ending. And in this case, we don't have the same difference. Is that fine? Well, actually we do. If, if th this is 162 and that's 158. Now, these are numbers that don't include uh, the, the 92. I'm sorry. I mean, like the difference between your direct labor and your gross profit I thought that would have been like the same difference as the finished goods beginning amount and ending amount. The four? 106, 102. Yeah, okay, so, that's four. So you see there's 162 that carried over. Now the difference between these two is four. So it's 162 minus the four. Maybe that one, that's 50, okay. Yeah. It, 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 it works the same way, except now you gotta remember this is without direct labor. So if you put direct labor in, you'd have to add 92 to all those. But it would still be the different, you know, it would still be this plus 92 and that plus 92. It would still be a difference between them. Okay. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, uh, now uh, we're gonna go to do problem four here in a second, but you might be wondering, well, okay, missing numbers, when does that ever happen? Never. Well, for the most part, you're right, it doesn't happen. But 
there are two cases where it does. And the two cases, uh, my fingers are off the screen. The two cases, we use these two fingers. Uh, the, the two cases where you actually have it are um, if you have a theft, someone broke in or whatever and, and stole stuff, or if you have a fire, sometimes you don't know what is in there. So if, if someone broke into your business, you go and you, you see them broke in your business, the police are going to ask what was taken. Well, it's, it's a difficult question because it's not there. <laughs> it's not like you can go count up what was taken. It was not there. So a lot of times you have to back into these numbers. And the same thing with your insurance company. They're going to say, well, what was taken? Go, well, I, I don't know. It, you know. It's gone. So you know, so you have to back into the numbers of what should have been there versus what is there. So it isn't that this is never used, but a lot of times, if the, like say if there's a fire or if there's a theft, um, a lot of times you have to back into these numbers for uh, police reports and insurance reports and all that kind of stuff. So it isn't that it never happened. And if, unless you just happen to take an inventory the night before, um, you, know, it's probably, you probably don't have those numbers right now. Try to get back into doing something similar to that. Okay. This is page four. And I think I'll let you guys work on it for a little bit. While you're working on that, I think I'll start filling in uh, on the sheet here just to, just to kind of show how we're on the sheet.
Okay, I don't know if that's any easier to read or not. Probably is easier than my scratchy writing. I'm going to do it by, um, by hand also. And, and hey, Professor, how do you do those arrows again? I know you said it initially. Oh, uh, uh, you do a, go to insert. And then uh, under shapes. So insert shapes and then click on the arrow thing. And usually it'll give you these over uh, up here. You know, it says you can, you can click on them uh, more quickly. But yeah, so it's, it's insert shapes and then that. Uh, and you can also copy them. You can also copy them if you want. Gotcha. Very quick way of getting them. You, you guys don't have to put those in, by the way. I just, I don't know. Which problem is this? Number four. Page four. And here, this will be the, um, this is my, my chicken scratch version of it. And just recalling what you said, um, that each arrow would be like considered a journal entry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So each one of these, you, you, yeah, you just, um, you know, for instance, this one, direct labor and work in process. That would be it. so. The debit. I show you the, the credit would be working for direct labor. Oops, can't see what I'm writing here. And then uh, work in process would be the and and so yeah so if you can do this you can actually do the journal entries which are probably I think the more difficult of all this stuff the journal entries is the start um, and by the way don't worry about for this class we're not going to do journal entries but if you're an accounting major uh, not a bad idea to know that. Yeah, if you can do this, it, it, to me, it's easier to do the journal entries from this than it is to try to figure them out just based on the stuff that's up there. You know, you chart this out and you'll know exactly where you're at. Okay, so. Yeah, and, and, and by the way, so these are all inventory accounts over here. So 
So these three are in, these are inventory counts, and they're just like any other inventory count. I mean, they're just it's just inventory. You know, there's a beginning amount. You add something good, and an ending, subtract it out. Yeah, it's a, they're exactly the same as the inventory accounts we were thinking about before, except instead of purchases, it has these other things in it. But the idea is exactly the same. So you start out with that's the added, and that's what's left over. Okay, so now we know that our cost of goods sold without purchases. Is 163. And we know that our cost of goods sold is with with the purchases is 400. So now we can figure out what the purchases should be. This is what the cost of goods sold should be. This is it without purchases. So the difference between those two must be the purchases. Okay, so we're going to subtract these, subtract them. Because the difference between these two is going to be what should have been in the purchases. So the purchases, uh, 237, which should be on the purchases. So this would be 38 plus 237, whatever it comes out to. Basically everything along, excuse me, along here, we get uh, 237 added to it, added through. But by the time you get to here, the 237 added to it would be the 400. Oops, oops, it would be the 400. There's on the so I'm just taking the same numbers we had here. So this would be cost of goods sold. 
look how much easier it is to read than my writing. Mm. <laughs> Compare and contrast. So this would be our calculations for it. Oh, gross profit. Um, let's look back. Can I stop it? Eh. <laughs> okay, so up here, I'm just going to do the um, gross profit. We have our sales. Cost of goods sold, and this is the real cost of goods sold is when it has uh, purchase of wool. And just to make sure you said gross profit and gross margin are the interchangeable, inter interchangeable, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think you're, I think the, the um, I think the principles book says gross profit. I think this book uses gross margin more, but they're exactly the same thing. Okay, well, let's uh, let's pull up the practice exam. This is all we're gonna do. Uh, don't worry about those other problems that are listed in the handout. Um, we didn't get it, we didn't, we didn't, we're not gonna do any textbook problems. Uh, um, but uh, if you do me a favor and pull up the practice exam. And we'll do that next. I didn't shrink the. Uh, I don't know what to do. I got too much stuff on the practice exam. I'm sorry. I, I, this is wrong. Oh, hold on a second. <laughs> I got to check and see something. I think I had the wrong practice exam. I do have the wrong practice exam. All right, so uh, you guys can go ahead and get started on the practice exam. I'm going to uh, print this out and I'll be right back. And walk my shame, walk of shame upstairs to find the new practice exam. And, and where do we find the practice exam under course files? He emailed it to us. I emailed it to you, but I, I can put, I didn't, I should put it in the course files. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll look up. I can put it as well. That's not a problem. They, they, they should be there. Anyway. Are the PDF and the Word the same, or are you just going to get the new one right now? Uh, PDF and Word are exactly the same. Oh. Okay. No, the, the, the ones you actually the ones you guys have is um, uh, correct. The one I have in front of me is not. But I said, oh, I don't have the correct one in front of me momentarily. 
Now, uh, the um, the PDF one does not have where you can just fill it in. I'm, I'm sure there's a way to do it. I, uh, I haven't done that. Professor, when did you email it to us? I did email to you. No, when? Oh, um, closer to like around right around six. Today, I have nothing today. Yeah, you know this email is not. They, they sent it. I sent it about uh, five fifty. It looks like mine didn't arrive till five fifty-seven. Uh, I, I got mine. I got your email. All right, well, here, uh, so look in there, uh, going to Blackboard under course files, I got them up now. Okay, because it's weird, because mine shows the last time I received an email was on Friday. Hmm. Yeah, the, the email, there's, there's definitely something wrong with the email here. Um, it's, uh, it's a little bit good. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've had trouble with mine of people receiving it. But also people um, sending me stuff, and I, I, I've turned on the forwarding because sometimes I get stuff forwarded to me that I don't receive in my Roosevelt account, but came through Roosevelt somehow. But anyway, um, yeah. So it's uh, so if you look in their file, of course file. Now here's the problem though: when I send you guys the exam, um, yeah. If you if you don't get an exam tonight. Uh, let me know because I'll, I'll send them all out tonight. But if you don't get one, that means there's probably something problem with the email. And if you don't get one, if you send me an email, a personal email or something, or, or a work email that I can send it to, uh, I'll send it to there. Okay. So, uh, is there anyone that does not have the practice exam? All right. And Where can see. we find it? In Blackboard? Yeah, let's see. Hold up. Yeah, if you go into Blackboard and then you're Okay, if you're under Blackboard and uh, of course, actually, I'll move this up. I don't need to. So, under course files, okay, and it'll be at the very end. And I just do these chronologically just so you know in the future. Okay, so, I found it. Practice yeah. exam, chapter yeah. one and two. Okay, but but just so you know that in the, in the future, when I put files in here, it's always gonna be at the end. So, you have to go all the way down. You know, it'll be a bunch of them in there. All right. Oh, I don't want to download the screen. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. So this uh, the first one is just a little straightforward one. And now you have extra credit points for doing the uh, financial statements, which we'll do. You don't have to do the uh, income statement, I should say. 
But if you want to, you can. Uh, you guys are probably started on this one. I don't know. Maybe this, maybe there's another announcement where it shows the the questions. Oh, you you, or you probably wrote some questions down too, right? Was it? Sorry, no mind. Okay.
Okay, again, that these ending inventories are the ones that are a little bit tricky that those are always get subtracted out. These would be minus. Because those are still left and we want to work on the other side. Okay, uh, the one that people are going to miss the most. Let's do that one first. Two fifty six. That's what one of those cost of manufacturing. This is the cost of. And you mentioned earlier, you're right. It's the difference between the beginning and end of the inventory. You know, that's why these are off. Beginning any inventories are different by a dollar, but those are different by a dollar. They're not off, they're just. Um, let's make the cost of so well, let's make it green. So those, oh, I should put it here actually. Now, this is the one that throws people. People put 384, but the 128 was actually manufactured in a different period. That was already there when you know, we started. So what was manufactured in this period was the 256. So this is the number that we have for the cost of manufacturing. We're not saying this one wasn't manufactured, they just weren't manufactured in this period. So the 256 in this case, and whatever whatever leaves work in process, whatever leaves finish goods. Okay, now here's the extra credit points. <clears throat> the extra credit points will be for uh, doing the income statement. You don't have to do this. This is again extra credit. Income statement look like this. Is that with our sales? Subtract out our cost of goods sold. So this will, on the on the exam, if you do this on the exam, it'll be extra credit points. It's not extra credit points on here, but on the exam, if you do it, it'll be extra credit points. Okay, so this will be um, gross profit or gross margin, either one is fine. All right, so. So, um, and you know, we have these, now the sales didn't go into our cost goods sold and these expenses didn't go in either. We're not saying that they don't exist. They just weren't part of the manufacturing. 
they did happen. It's just not, they're not in, in uh, they're not used to manufacture stuff. So these two we're going to go over here. These are expensive, so that'll be negative. And so that will give us our net income. So we're going to take 280 minus. And so this will be extra credit on the exam. So, you know, these things that we didn't use in this, uh, again, we're not saying it didn't happen, it didn't happen, but um, they're just not part of the cost of it. So, so, you know, this is how much profit they made on it, the gross profit. These were the selling expense and administrative expense. You know, the money going out, but not for manufacturing. And so this would be then total income. Question on that? No. Okay. All right. Um, well, then we'll go on to page two. Page two is some of what we just covered. Oh, by the way, again, I don't, you know, you can use. Um, You use notebook paper, you can use, uh, you know, if you want to use, uh, you know, you make your tea accounts or whatever, it's, it's fine. However you want to do it, it's fine with me. You just take a picture of it. Um, or if you do it in the file itself, it's fine too, as far as the exam is concerned, or, you, or the practice. Okay, let's go on to page two. Same problem? Do we just do this one? <laughs> the same problem twice. No. Okay. Uh, so this one. We start out with the beginning first. The easiest. Wait, excuse me, Professor. Mm -hmm. the, the amount you have on the direct materials for 60, shouldn't that be the overhead? Oh, never mind. Never yeah, mind. Sorry. No, no, I was looking at the. Yeah. yeah. That's an unhappy. Was, it's yes. A, it's an unhappy coincidence. I didn't realize that. That's a bad Okay. 
Yeah. Okay. Them. Never mind. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was. I thought the indirect cost of sixty put in the direct materials. No. Yeah. Sorry. And you, but you do have to watch me on this because I do, I do make mistakes. So, all right. So this is, uh, yeah, that this mistake was that I made it. <laughs> all right. So this is. Uh, I try to avoid doing that kind of thing, getting the same because it's natural, you know, we always look for patterns and stuff. You know? yes. so, so when you see one, you go, oh, wait a minute, it must be that. And, you know, sometimes it's just that I'm not paying attention. Okay, and again, I'll just correct labor. I know the zero is wrong. Maybe, right? Keep on typing because of page. Yeah. So I know that this, this direct labor is wrong. But when I get this cost consult at the end, I'm going to be able to compare it to the real cost consult. And I should be able to figure out what that is. So I know that this zero is wrong, but I'll be wrong by exactly what that should be. And don't forget these ending ones are negative, they get subtracted out. All right. Um... Okay, now this cost of its sold is really cost of its sold without direct labor. So I know this is wrong, but I can figure out what the direct labor should have been because of this I hear the cost of sold with direct labor is 370, 
without is 155, so we can figure out uh, uh, what it should have been. I'm going to do something crazy. I'm going to draw my straight line first. So try a little bit better here. So this is what the direct neighbors are. You can't see what I'm doing. Uh, there's the direct neighbor should be. And again, you could always plug it in work to it. You know, if you plug this in, you'll come up with the 370. So this is 215. And the uh, gross profit will be your sales. Minus our cost of goods sold. And so again, that's that one. And that is, you know, if we know what the cost of the sold is and we know what it is without the direct labor, we can uh, back in the number. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to, I'm going to show you how the uh, assignments and how you're going to, where are you going to submit these. And so I'm going to share the screen. Okay, so you, know, you come here to the announcements, but uh, if you go down to assignments, there's nothing in assignments right now, but that's going to soon change. So a little bit. And this is how we make assignments. <laughs> we click on assignments, go down to assignment. And the first one is going to be the chapter one and two handout. Uh, 
due date is going to be next Monday. If, if you don't get into my Monday, the grades will come out Monday, but if you don't get it in, that's fine. I, I do take work late, but uh, it won't be in your grade, obviously, until you turn it on. Points possible, submission details. All right, uh, you can have unlimited attempts. You can put them as many times as you want. And I'll take the highest grade. So if you have 10 pictures, put in 10 pictures, unlimited. Put in as many as you want. And oops, I went past it. Okay, so that's where you're gonna put the chapter one and two handout, the pages one through four. I'm gonna edit that so it says pages one through four. Okay, uh, another assessment is going to be the practice exam. Or assignment, I should say. Oops. Due date is next week. Points one hundred. Okay, so that's the stuff from today. So and last week. So we want to do handout and then one or two practice exam, and then also I'm going to put in the exam now. I'll send that out later on tonight. Uh, and the, the exam is very similar to what we just did. Okay, so these two, the first two, we're going to something here. Okay. Um, so these first two are the ones we just did. Uh, this last week and this week. First one, the second one, the practice exam we did uh, today. And then this I'll send out to you guys. And you should get one today. If you don't get one today, let me know. And uh, um, you can contact me if you don't think your email is getting through to me. Uh, if you go to my, uh, if you go to the instructor, uh, there's my personal email account. You can feel free to use that. There's my cell phone if you, you know, don't send anything from cell phone. But, uh, if, uh, if, if you need to send me the, um, you know, a link to your uh, work account or whatever you want, wherever you want me to send the exam to, I can send it from this account and see if that works. So if you if you if you don't get any if you don't get the exam by tonight, and, and they should be sending them out probably you should certainly get it by eleven o'clock. So if you, you know tomorrow morning or whatever you should have it. Um, and if you don't go ahead and uh, contact me and I'll uh, I'll send it with, with the um, Okay, so let's do some work here. Okay. 